Welcome once again to the program that catapults you off the approach road, slap into the middle of the information highway, where 100 lanes of digital data traveling in both directions will leave you clinging to the central crash barrier, gibbering with fear, unless you stay tuned to the only show that shows you how to get the best out of watching your telephone while you talk to the television set and cook papadoms in your CD player with your head in the fish tank. <laughs> Yes, the information highway will take us out of the long, dark age of ignorance and into the bright tomorrow of human self-fulfillment. The flatulence transformer <laughs> will enable people to cross continents under their own steam. Ex-supermodels will go on to glittering new careers. And architecture will become an exact science. But first, we glean and cull the scintillating global infosphere of multi-satellite news interlinks to bring you the stories of what will happen tomorrow, tonight. Today's top stories... <laughs> Celibate Angel of Mercy and Compassion meets Mother Teresa. <laughs> British Ice Dancing Hope says I'm ready for the judges. <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame admits Cliff Richard. <laughs> Famous tenor stunned by falling pizza. Vivian Westwood says the waif look is over. <laughs> and now the mission to explain moves on, probing the background behind the foreground beneath the surface of the depth. Blue whales have been forced through thinning numbers to find love partners beyond their own species. Another rare survivor of a dying breed says, you gotta get it where you can. <laughs> Princess Stephanie of Monaco's choice of male companions has frequently distressed her family. She has announced she will marry her bodyguard. Her previous boyfriend tells us she thought I was too sophisticated. <laughs> Shock news for the Prince of Wales. 52% of the Welsh don't like him. We talk to the 48% who do. <laughs> That's what the pictures looked like when they came in. Now here's how they look when they began to move and we move with them on down the fiber optic funnel into the maelstrom of the event stream. Britain's special relationship with the USA was in tatters this week after Prime Minister Major's disastrous visit to Pittsburgh. Favorable publicity hid the fact that Mr. Major made a catastrophic diplomatic blunder at the very start of the visit. After his reception dinner, he told reporters what he thought of the meal, a steak personally cooked for him by Hillary Clinton. Wildly overdone. Wildly overdone. <laughs> President Clinton later said farewell to Mr. Major with deep emotion. <laughs> Financial scandal at the BBC this week. The corporation was accused of paying money to gangsters for appearing in the series The Underworld. Perhaps the most notorious gangster included in the series was the dreaded Ginny the Mole Batomley. <laughs> Ginny the Mole confessed to a long catalogue of hospital break-ins, shakedowns and sell-offs. Ginny the Mole the Tomley is now ready to reveal to us how much the BBC series paid her. Ginny, how much was it? 565 million pounds. And how much will this programme have to pay you for revealing how much the other programme paid you? We're talking about more money, much more money. <laughs> Ginny the Mole, a tough baby. Many of her victims would be in hospital, if there were any hospitals left. <laughs> the worldwide problem of graffiti could be solved in Britain. A new kind of paint will repel idiotic messages scrawled by underprivileged adolescents. But the truly dedicated graffiti artist is unlikely to be deterred. He's a loner with a mission in life, to use up every atom of paint in that aerosol. This one's nearly empty. It still, it still works quite well. In the United States, Lorena Bobbitt, the woman who amputated her husband's penis, was back in the news. She was released from detention after a judge decided that men in general had nothing to fear from her. Mrs. Bobbitt is now on holiday in Mexico, where the Mexican men reacted to her arrival with their customary bravery. <laughs> 